So following on from the last video, we're going to talk about the Asian liquidity run. I mentioned in the previous video that the Asia session is generally in a consolidation phase on a lot of the major pairs, the Euro, Pound and Dollar pairs. After the Asia session, we often have a run of the liquidity either side of the range, and this alone can provide good day trades and a solid day trading career foundation. If you can master this Asian liquidity run technique, you can simply repeat this every single day or, or every day that an opportunity presents itself. And overall, you're going to make some seriously good profits. So I'm going to break down what the Asian liquidity really is in this video and show you why it happens and also how we can capitalize on it. Now I'm showing you this before we get into the processes because obviously if I start to bring this in after I've explained the top-down analysis process and so on, you're going to be very confused. So if we cover it now, you'll be prepped and ready to go, ready for when we dig deeper into the execution of intraday trading strategies. So on the chart here, we can see I have the Asian session marked out as a little diagram here. So this is the consolidation that takes place within the Asian session. And what the Asian liquidity run generally is, is at the end of the Asian session, when we come out of that timing, we often sweep the liquidity above, and then we are going to get a push all the way through which is then going to take the liquidity this side, which could either then end in a run up or a run down. But basically what this does is it gives us a good target entry and exit for a trade, as long as the other concepts we've spoken about, supply and demand and market structure, come together to actually formulate a setup. So why does this happen? Why do we get a sweep of the liquidity this side and this side of the range on most days? Well, the best reason that I can put it down to is the London breakout strategy. Now, you may have heard of this in your earlier days of trading where you are fishing for good ideas. You may have heard of the London breakout strategy. Basically, it's a strategy that accounts for the Asia consolidation that we see, but actually looks to trade it in the wrong way. Now, it's, it's pretty well known and it's used by a lot of people and it's taught over on YouTube by many, many people as one of those beginner trading strategies that are going to make you rich. Now, the problem with the London breakout strategy is that if we take this back to liquidity, we spoke about liquidity and how the market has to collect orders on the buy and the sell side. And oftentimes when we get a breakout, it's actually not going to be a breakout that's going to continue in the direction you want it to. It's going to be a breakout that takes liquidity, collects the orders that are sitting in here, which are what? Sell orders here and sell orders here with stop losses above. And also breakout traders who have breakout buy orders here or sell orders there. So what we often see is the market pushes up, triggers those buy orders in, takes out the stops of any sellers in the Asian range, then pulls all the way down, takes out the liquidity beneath the range, triggering in the sell stop orders and also triggering in the stop losses of anyone who was buying during that Asian session. So as you can see, liquidity is what really messes up the London breakout strategy. Now the London breakout strategy is basically an approach where you would put a buy order here and a sell order here. And then when the market breaks out, you go ahead and delete one of the orders and you are supposed to, you know, ride this move up and continue the trend for the day. The problem is, like we just said, what we actually normally get is a push up and then a sharp push down. So the London buyers who brought on a London breakout or on the flip side, if the market pulls down in the Asian range and pushes through to the sellers, they're generally going to get wiped out. Now, that is where we are actually looking to benefit. Instead of looking to buy the breakout or sell the breakout of the Asian range, we are actually looking to sell back into the range after the breakout happens. So what we're looking for is a movement like this. We want to see a push up. And then we want to see the market gain some weakness and pull back into the range and then we can sell back into it now on the flip side when we are looking at a breakout of the low of the asia range we are looking for the market to pull back in where we will then look to buy back through the asia range so this is what we're looking for when we are looking to trade the asian session liquidity run basically the market has come up above to clear liquidity because we have consolidation so there's going to be orders here breakouts and stops and there's going to be orders here breakouts and stops and the market is going to collect those orders, then push down and collect those orders and then make its real run for the day in whichever direction it decides to make the run in. By that time, we're actually out of these trades. So we don't care. We are simply targeting from this point down to this point or from this point up to this point, whichever way the market is giving us an opportunity. So what I'm going to do now is show you some examples of this in the live markets, actually looking at a few of the back-tested charts uh, and actual live trades that I've personally very recently taken using that Asian session liquidity run trading style. So the first Asia sweep trade we're going to look at is this one that we can see here on the 22nd of November. So what we see in the morning is basically a large sell-off 
a low point, and then we actually have this small break of structure here, which indicates that we may be moving into an uptrend. Now, this is obviously not going to be an Asia sweep opportunity, but what this does is give us a basis for a trade. We can see that we have a demand zone here. We can see that the Asia range sits just above this demand zone, and we are now selling out to the bottom of this demand area. So what we can do is scale to the lowest time frames, see if there are any high interest areas in here. And then if we get a reaction from a high interest area here and then begin the movement up, that's when we can then confidently buy in to take through the top of the Asia range. So the first thing we really do when we have an overall picture of the market is mark out the high and low of the Asia range. Now we can see where we would like to target and where we want to actually buy back in when price crosses back above. So if I'm now go down to the so if I now go down to the one minute time frame, scale back to this demand zone that we spoke about and see what we have going on here, we can actually see that within this demand area, we have a couple of areas of interest. There's this area down here, and then there's also this area here. Now, as we've spoken about, we like to use the zone that broke structure. So if we mark onto the high here, we can see we had a lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, and then we had this area of consolidation before the market took off. So the zone that broke structure in this instance is going to be the one that we can see just here. So if we grab our parallel channel tool and mark this area on, what we can now do is scale forward to price action and see if we get a good reaction from this zone. We're obviously not using this as our buying point, but we can use this as a basis for the trade. And as we can see, price has just about come into this level. Now, while we're here, I'm going to neaten up the Asia low level and the Asia high level, and also going to mark out this that we can see as liquidity with a floor of two equal lows, which we currently have here in the market. So now we have an overall picture of a trade. We can see from the Asia high, we have continually downtrended, but we've just come through some liquidity, pushed through the imbalance, traded into a demand zone. And now if we began to see a push up like so, we could begin buying into the market to take it towards that Asia high. So allowing the market to play out, first thing we need to really see is a break of structure. If we can see a clear break over the structural high point just here, that is going to give us indication that the market is regaining some strength after fulfilling that demand zone. Now, the reason we want to wait for serious breaks of structure and also the reason we like to see good levels and also the reason we like to see interest levels retested like this demand zone is because sometimes we are not going to get a clean sweep. In fact, most of the time we won't get a clean sweep. We're going to get multiple pushes down and then eventually when the trend shifts, that's the one we want to trade out of. So the reason we wait for structure is because, for example, if we look here, we did have a sweep, but then we came up and we didn't form a higher high. So we wouldn't want to buy in on this retest for the simple reason that we haven't had a structure break and we also didn't see the imbalance filled and the demand zone retested. Now this one, we've obviously had that retest. We haven't yet had a break of structure. So what we can do is see what the market does. And if we get a push above like so, that could give us indication that we want to look towards some buys. So in this instance, we did get the first little tap here and then a consolidation and a push up here. We can see an imbalance down here and this is the zone where the strength really came in. So we could look at this zone for a potential buy. To trigger the buy, we would like to put a buy limit on the market here. We have the structure confirmation, so this isn't really a risk entry trade. This is actually a confirmation trade, and we are on the lowest time frames as well. So seeing confirmation on these low time frames is just what we like to see to get into trades. We could go ahead, place our order there, place our target at the Asia high. Here we have a 4.45 R position. So if you're risking 1%, that is a 4.45% gain for a 1% loss. If you are risking half a percent, that's going to be a 0.5% risk for a 2.25% position. So allowing the market to now play out, now that we've seen a higher high, we be patient with our orders. And as we see the market comes down, we've now formed these two equal lows. So that could give us extra indication that we don't want to buy yet and we do want to wait for that low level to be met. And after forming the two equal lows, we get a push through, we get a tap into that zone of interest, and then the market begins to move away with speed. So throughout this, we then form a higher high. This is where we could bring in some stop management, which we will learn about very soon. But as we can see, the market is going to push all the way up, eventually tapping the Asia high and sweeping the liquidity just above the Asia high. Now, the reason that I actually target the Asia highs and don't try to extend the targets most of the time if I'm taking an Asia session trade is because we often get a sweep of the liquidity above and then a large reversal. So I said earlier on in the video that we get sweeps both sides of the range. That's why we don't want to target too far because oftentimes we'll sweep the low and get an entry or sweep the high and get an entry. And then when we sweep the other side of the range, we won't continue and we will just sell off or buy back up if we are in a short position. So as you can see, that is a 4.45 R position already secured. 
in a very small amount of time. If we check the time on that trade, that, that is a one hour and 35 minute position from start to finish and you make 4.45% or 2.225% if you are risking a smaller amount in one hour and 30 minutes, which obviously is very, very good. And that will be your trading done for the day. And then the next thing you do is just wait on it and, and then come back tomorrow after the Asia session and take another trade very similar to this. Now, like I said, most days we are going to get these Asia sweep trades. Sometimes we will not get them. Sometimes the market's not going to be playing so nice, but oftentimes you're going to get these and you will definitely get them enough to actually build a solid foundation for a career. It's worth noting as well, we have already spoken about this, but the best currency pairs for the Asian liquidity run trading are EURUSD and GBPUSD from my personal testing. And I'm sure it also works on pairs like Euro GBP, GBP JPY and so on. But I like to be refined as we've already spoken about earlier on. So staying to a refined list of Euro USD and GBP USD is the best bet if you are going to be trading this approach. So that is a clear example there of an Asian liquidity sweep trade. We can see there we have a push down, lower lows, lower highs. We form the liquidity, we break through the liquidity, we fill the imbalance, we hit a demand zone. Then we have some breaks of structure showing that the strength is back in the market. And then we simply place a buy order on and let the trade move for us. And as you can see, we have fulfilled the full target. And I do believe on this position, after the target got fulfilled, the market sold off. And that is a clear indication of why I only target the Asia high or low for my positions. So as you can see, we had that small sweep of liquidity pushing just above the range. And then the market sold off dramatically, which would have given back all of your profits. So rather than trying to extend targets too far for an intraday trade, you may want to just focus on the Asia high. And that is the Asia liquidity sweep. Now you're going to see many more examples of this later on when we are talking about the top down processes and showing you how to actually find and execute positions on the low time frames. But first of all, we're going to talk about the psychological aspect of low time frame trading because it can be quite mentally draining when you first start out doing it. So I'll see you in the next video when I give you some good pointers and tips on maintaining a good mindset through intraday trading.